Jason Valentine Thieves. This is why we do it. This is why I started the festival. These guys are incredibly, incredibly talented. And it's an absolute honor to have you guys here. Let's make sure no big trips on stage. No problem. There we go. Are, are you texting somebody? Are you sure? Oh, we have somebody on. Nice. I think we have another microphone down there. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, now that everybody's up, one more time. How awesome! And we're here for our tenth year, tenth year anniversary of the Canadian Film Fest. Our third sold out show, and that doesn't even include the sold out industry series events. We got somebody on Skype or Skype or FaceTime. Yeah. Whatever the kids are using these days. Let's do. I'm gonna come over here. See how this works. You want to hear that? In? Okay. Okay. Why don't? How about? Wait. These are. We're all. Is everybody mixed up? Okay. How about we get the floaters people over here, and then chasing Valentine on that half? Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, no, this, this will make more sense. This will make more sense. Ten years of doing this, I still can't do it right. Okay, let me give it. Let me give the microphone over here. I want to start over here, and then just I'm going to and, and just actually start introducing everybody. Okay. Hi, I'm Amelia. I wrote the floaters. <laughs> Nick Wilson, the director, couldn't be here, but he wished he could. This is Jessica Hankson. This is the producer. This is Joshua Allen. He's our awesome director of photography. And this is Angela Bashir. She played Dolly and also was a great help for me when I decided to put myself on the screen. Yes, so thank you. Awesome. Listen, I'm going to start off questions because it's my festival. But if anybody has any questions at any time, please put up your hands and, uh, and I'll totally get to you so you can ask anybody a question. So, uh, how autobiographical was that? <laughs> Not at all. No, just like a random idea that I had. Um, no, I guess the idea really came out of the. I really wanted to play with, um, you know, when you start a relationship and it's like, that like crazy heat and it's like really energetic between you, it's charged. And then, you know, you sort of get five to six down the years down the road and there's still like a buzz there, but it's not the same. So then I thought, okay, so think of a bathroom situation. So you know when you first start dating, you want to be really polite and you're like on your best behavior. Um, so let's say you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night after like having some like hot, you know, situation. It, guy you don't know very well, girl you don't know very well, you want to go to the bathroom, maybe like put some toothpaste in your mouth, fix your face, like so you go back in and you, you know, you just feel like you're, have, like a, you're a person. And then let's say you open the toilet seat and it's like, holy shit, that's not a sexy situation at all. But if you're like five or six years down the road, you open the toilet seat, you're like, oh, not really? Okay. Seriously? Like, could you at least pretend that you care? Um, so that was the, uh, that was the inspiration. A, a floater was literally the inspiration. That's awesome. It's a true artist who can find inspiration in shit. Yes. Okay, that was that no, was That's hard. fine. That was you know what? It's a big poop joke of a movie, so the more poop jokes that can be made, the I'm good. Yeah. Floating around. I just loved it. Yeah, it we wanted so to get them bigger, but that's all we could do. Yeah. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, okay, so just in case. Any questions? Now I know Christian Broom was uh, was here. He yeah. had to run out. He was here for for, for the beginning of it, but he yeah. did have to run out of the prior engagement. Um, he's a great guy. Yeah, we we're so happy. And he's in like seventeen movies in this festival. It's basically the Christian Broom Film Festival. I thought you were going to change the name just for this. It's crazy, right? Yeah. And, and I mean, even the rest of your cast, everybody was so good. Did you guys just naturally have that that chemistry and that ability to work with each other? Because it seemed like. You, you've done this a million times before. It was so easy. 
Uh, yeah, we, Amelia and I, and Lucy Guest, she's also here, uh, did Charlie and Yoni hashtag life after Woo! party together, which Woo! was with City Hall. Okay. And so Amelia wrote this film, and we you know we've worked together many times. Uh, Angela, Christian, Stefano, and I have worked, and so there was just this natural kind of chemistry. And Ange is also a great coach, and was kind of there, you know, just sort of plugging in and, and giving us notes. And, it was very easy to... So very collaborative. Yeah, it was very collaborative. There was improv. There was... It was just... We're all, I think, on the same level in terms of very natural... So did, did you acting. improv... So did you improv off the script or did you improv while writing the script? Or both? I would say it was improv, like, off the script. Like, for example, the hyenas fornicating. That was just an amazing... Uh, picture that happened to me in this cottage that we rented, and we walked into this cottage for the first time and we were like, well that's got to go in the film. Well, obviously. <laughs> you can't write that. But I saw the film the first time, because I, I don't even know what was going through my mind in that shot, and I had no idea that they were rolling the camera, where I look, where looking at the cheetah, they're doing their thing. Right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Those things. And uh, that was what would happen too, is that they'd be rolling and we didn't know. And so they caught some really great moments because of that. We were lost in, I don't know where I was, but somewhere. So That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Guys, congrats on a, on a great. Thank you so much. Great yeah. um, there's an audience that's going to go there after the my co programmer after the end. Thank you so much for being here. Where's Natalie? You come over here. I want you close. Go ahead. Yeah, I get sexy. Go ahead. God style. What's up? Uh, but seriously, that was awesome. And second time you're back in two years, correct? You were here last year with uh, um, Double Feature. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, but this is quite a different movie. Correct. So, are you mostly? I don't know. I, it's easy to get like labeled a genre filmmaker, mm -hmm. right? And then I even hate that label because. Every single kind of a drama is a yeah, every type of genre, genre, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But did you uh, did you do this one because you wanted to do something different than what you had just done, mm -hmm. or is it just really whatever, whatever? Oh, whatever. I, I do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, I'm I grew up watching horror, so I love horror. I love thrillers. I like horror. 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 I like darkest <laughs> stuff, right? And uh, but I but at the same time, I love movies. I love any genre. I love all movies. Um, and I don't want to get pigeonholed as the guy who does a certain type of movie. So I would, do, I want to do, I want to be the type of filmmaker who does m good movies. I just want to do. You just want to tell good stories. I, want, I just want to tell good right. stories. Start the script. I don't. I wrote Chasing Valentine with, with Neil, but I don't really want to really write. That's not my 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 forte. I want to direct and edit. That's my thing. And I want to acquire scripts. I want to acquire good stories, good scripts. And if I feel that I can do justice to that script, I want to do it. Awesome. It could be a musical. I want to do a musical. I want to do a comedy. You know? I want to do different movies. Different types of movies. As long as it's a good story, it's a good script, it's a good movie, I want to do it. Awesome. Well, well how about we uh, introduce uh, yeah. Absolutely, right? Yeah. A true filmmaker that just loves stories. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? I mean, that's why we showed Late Night Double Feature last year. Yeah. Well, we'll show this. We'll show docs and everything. You guys yeah. go. It's just, just, you're good at everything. We're good at everything. Yes. Um, why don't you introduce everybody that you brought up on stage? Yeah, I'm going to pass the mic, but this is the yeah, cast and crew of Chasing Valentine. We'll start Woo. with Neil. Woo -woo. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure, Neil, I'm a co writer, and Adam loves the blog, so that's why we're doing this. <laughs> uh, my name is Adam, I play Chase. Nice. Yeah. Hey, I'm Gwendolyn, I play Valentine. Well, you're absolutely stand up. So good. So good. Uh, I'm, I'm Bruce. I'm the cinematographer. Hey, I'm Ashley, and I'm the casting director. And Mike, I was the second editor, and I was also the porno guy for like four <laughs> seconds or something. Uh, Joseph Hyde's key replacement makeup artist. I'm Jen, I was Scarlet. I'm 
Adam Nav. I worked on the film in the background and I'm a part of Splice Films. Yeah. Yeah. We actually have two guests all the way from Palm Springs. We have Brad Cowan. You probably can't see him, but you may be able to hear him. I'm going to crank up the volume here. So b Rat and Gina are for the in Palm Springs right now for a shoot that I'm going to join them at tomorrow morning. But Brad and Gina. Say something, guys. Brad, I would love to have somebody ask Brad a question and see if we can understand whatever it is that yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah! Yeah! So, Nat, Nat, this is, uh, this is one of these, this is one of these absolute feats of independent filmmaking. I mean, how many, how was that trying, how, trying to get over every single obstacle sure you found one every single day, you're on a limited budget, uh, you've got a great crew behind you, obviously, or else it couldn't have looked that great. Uh, so, but how was that struggle as a, as a you know, indep independent filmmaker on a, on a low budget? Uh, this is the toughest shoot I've had on the go in my entire career. This so up to today, Chasing Valentine was the toughest one for me. Without these guys over here, without people like Bruce and, and Adam and Gwendolyn and Neil and all these guys, I would I would have killed them in the middle of the shoot because I, I was I, I found that I found my breaking point in this film actually. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Everything what, that, what I mean, like, were there some days when you're like, how am I going to get this done? Like, this is what the hell did I do to myself? Yeah, absolutely. Because it's been my passion project. I've been working on this project for about uh, two years, I think, leading up to the shoot. We shot, uh, we started production in October 2014, and then, and we had our world premiere in October 2015. So it's a you know, one year turnaround, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. But I've been working on it for about two years prior to that, writing it, developing it, trying to get it funded, casting, so on and so forth. Um, and when it came time to shoot the movie, everything you can imagine. I, I know there's a lot of filmmakers in the audience, so you guys know everything that could go wrong, wrong went wrong, and then some. There was a constant hurdle every single day. I know uh, Gina and I would be like every single day trying to figure out, okay, so what fires do we need to put out so that we can continue shooting tomorrow? And that was literally pretty much every single day of the, of the 14 day shoot that we had, or 13 day shoot that we had. But uh, you know what, we got to it, and um, you know, we, we all sitting here watching the movie now. So. I, I remember a conversation that Bruce and I had. I was driving him home one night, um, and probably went right smack in the middle of the shoot, and uh, I looked at him and I'm like, dude, if I can cut together something cohesive from this shit show, I'd be content. Um, and then when I saw this. A, more, a little more than that, man. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, because really, like, like, all these guys here, like, I couldn't have done it with these guys. I mean, filmmaking is obviously like the best. Um, example of, of teamwork and family, and, and this is like, I, I can't give you a better example than these guys over here. And we, we went through, you know, quite, quite, the, uh, quite the hurdle making this movie, but we got through it. Um, and everyone wore different hats. I remember there were days where we didn't have, like, the scene, the last scene in the movie with the, with the Walkman and the, and the necklace and the cassette, and we didn't have the Walkman on the set, and we didn't, we didn't have the necklace. And that was the first scene that we shot, so we shot that scene First, that established the necklace, which is important throughout the whole movie. And for several different reasons, we didn't have to walk, but we didn't have the necklace. And I called Neil in a panic to grab a Walkman. So he got on his bike, went to some dollar store somewhere, and got a Walkman. Uh, it's going to be even hard just to find that. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, they're expensive. <laughs> Luckily, like about a couple weeks before the shoot, I lost my day job. So, uh, yeah, luckily, I could actually be on set every day. And so, I, I basically became props master, or production manager, food guys. I know Starbucks so well. Like, I know all the orders of like, how to do it, which I didn't know before. And, uh, so, that was a good thing. <laughs> yeah, and, and the necklace, which is a huge important plot point in the movie. We didn't have it on set that day when we needed it, and we were losing. We had the location for two hours. We were losing light. We were losing the location. We had, we had to figure out something. And out of nowhere, Reg, who's our uh, water person, is right there, pulled out this necklace out of I don't know where. 
<laughs> and that became the hero necklace for the rest of the movie, and that set the tone. And, and that's how this movie got made. Like every single day, it was something like that that we had to figure out, solve, and just get it done. But in a way, with the right people, with, with awesome people like we had in this film, we just made it work. And at the end of the day, we had a movie, you know? And now we're here in front of you guys watching it. That's awesome. Are there any questions? Uh, if there's one right here in the middle. watched Chasing Valentine. She watched uh, first cut uh, of the movie at my place, um, and she loved it, and, and she's here watching the final cut now, which is thank you, Billy. Um, but yeah, so uh, her question was, uh, going from that, that point, rough cut, first cut, to the festival that we had played. Uh, the movie's still young, um, but we premiered at the Orlando Film Festival, uh, and it ran over really amazingly well, and I was super happy, I was super nervous, but I was actually really happy with the turnout and the way people responded to it. And then two weeks after that, we all went to um, Milan for the uh, European premiere of Chasing Valentine. And it's, it was super interesting sort of seeing, you know, a, a North American audience versus a European English audience. Um, and uh, yeah, the, like the reception of the movie has been you know, super awesome. I was like, just so nervous premiering this movie. As you get, as you probably know, it's just a very different type of movie, right? It's like, <clears throat> kind of dense genres a little bit, but uh, you know, it, it went really well. We won. Uh, Gwen won Best Actress in Milan. Absolutely, and deservedly so. And uh, and Brad, he had won Best Supporting Actor in Milan as well. That's awesome. for Best Photography, uh, Jen for Best Supporting Actors, like, you know, we won a uh, Neil for, uh, and I for uh, Screenwriting, and Best Picture as well. So we were nominated for seven Woo! awards in line and won two of them. So that was really, really nice. Great. That's great. That's so good. That's so good. Uh, and you know what, but, but screening the movie here at our hometown, at the Canadian Film Festival at the Royal Theatre with a sold out crowd yeah. is Pretty damn spectacular. So thank you so much for coming yeah. and supporting any film. You know what, and here's the thing is I, I don't think we should ever support Canadian film because we're obliged to. We go out to watch good movies. They happen to be Canadian, and that's the beauty of it. We did not come here because and we're not watching these and applauding because it's polite, because we're a polite group of people. It's because they're really good movies. So let's give it up for these really talented people. to vote for uh, the future movie. Five means really great. Don't even, don't even bother with anything else. And I'm plugging it. I'm pushing. Thank you. Five guys. And Thank please, you. if you want to help uh, the film festival uh, stay around so that we can keep showing these awesome people's movies, buy a two. Buy a t-shirt. I, I just put them down to $15 each. Uh, we have another movie uh, that's going to start soon, so we do have to clear the, uh, the room. I want to thank everybody, especially filmmakers, especially you guys. Oh, and we have a really quick plug. A quick plug. Okay, if you guys like the soundtrack of the movie, we have cassettes on sale for Chasing Valentine. That comes, it comes with a digital download, so you don't have to go run around by a Walkman. But uh, it's a limited edition cassette that's only available, we only have 100 units available, but it's also on iTunes and uh, uh, Amazon, so you can get it there as well. But we have cassettes over here for 10 bucks. Grab it, support the film. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. <laughs>